Chan Sun Leong, Chapter 1 The Original Being of God Section 1 God is the Incorporeal Subject Partner 1.1 1 .1. The Incorporeal God God is without form. If we should conceive of Him as large, He is infinitely large. And if we should conceive of Him as small, He is infinitely small. Does God really exist? Can God be felt as more real than the pain that makes you say ouch when someone pinches you? Or more real than the experience of eating when you are hungry? This is the question. When we know that God truly exists, all problems will be solved. We have a mind. The mind is invisible and may not appear to exist. Yet, it exists. Does it exist in the head or in the heart? Mind exists throughout your body, with not even one cell within your body where it is not present. The same is true for God, because this world is like His body. He is present everywhere in the world. You cannot see God. Can you see energy? Since God is the original body of energy, you cannot see God even in the spirit world. The wise, all-knowing, and omnipotent God thought that it was most convenient to rule as an incorporeal being who could move around freely in the midst of things. Since God has no form, He can pass through things at will without any problem. God may come to your body and pass through it, but you would not notice. When you doze off, God may walk on your body as He pleases without you noticing. How convenient! So it is possible to say that God chose to remain invisible because He thought that it would be most convenient. We are normally unaware of the air around us. The air is there, but we do not feel it. If we, unaware of the air circulating around us, how can we be aware of God? It is more most convenient for God to remain invisible. At the same time, He has to be more than big enough to wrap around this huge universe. Although God is without form, He requires a mind that is bigger than the universe. Do all of you here have love? Do you have life? You all have sperm or ova to continue your lineage, don't you? Do you also have a conscience? Then, have you ever seen love? Have you seen life, lineage, or conscience? Although you know they exist, you can neither touch nor see them. You, you can know about them only by feeling them through your mind and heart. Likewise, when you are asked whether God exists or whether you have seen Him, you cannot say that you have not seen Him. When God is in your heart, your heart knows it. When God is in your heart, you can break through the protective walls and communicate with the saints who died thousands of years ago. You can do this when the eternal God comes into your heart. You cannot capture eternity through time. Time exists within eternity. That is why even though we cannot see God, our hearts know Him. How does God love? This is a difficult question to answer, isn't it? Since God is without form, He can go anywhere inside a lady's eyes, inside her heart. He can go everywhere. There is nowhere He cannot go. Then, where does God live? Where is His home? God's home is in the middle of our heart. God's masculine heart lives in the heart of man, and God's feminine heart lives in the heart of women. Suppose that God, who is om omnipotent, all-knowing, and controls all of heaven and earth, were here. With His power, He could blow away Mount Tebek and put a hole through the earth. Do you think you could survive watching such a God? So it is good that God is invisible. If He were visible, your nerves would tremble and you could not survive for even one hour. So you should be grateful that God is invisible. This is not a laughing matter. 
what I have told you now comes from my own Payagnan experiences. It is an account from my own experiences, not those of, your, of others. What if God decided to remove all the air in the world, leaving only one gallon? It would be a naughty method. But if God did that, world unification would be no problem. Perhaps he would be able to do it in five minutes. If God took away all the air and asked, Will you unify or not? All humankind would shout in unison, We will! God could unite the world in an instant using this method. But we are thankful that God does not do that with the air. Without air, we cannot live. Air is absolutely necessary for life. Yet people gulp air like thieves without feeling grateful for it. If God, the great master of heaven and earth, were visible to human eyes, wouldn't people fight each other to capture God? There would be no way to stop the battle. So it is good that God is invisible. America and the Soviet Union would fight, each claiming God as theirs. They would. Who would be able to stop the fighting? The all-knowing God stays invisible lest such fight break out. To wish that God were visible is foolish. It is better he is not. This universe is filled, is veiled in mystery. This great universe is some 21 billion light years across. One light here is the distance light travels in a year. Light can circle the earth seven and a half times in one second. So you can begin to conceive of how far light travels in a year. Then, how large must the master be who can rule this huge universe? If God had a body, how tall would he be? If God is as large as we say he is, would he be able to drag his cumbersome body around? How inconvenient it would be if he had a lumber about like that. Every time he moved, the universe would fall over in surprise. God is a wise being. He is, this is why he decided to be an invisible Lord. Have you ever thought about God's weight? How heavy do you think he is? How many kilograms does he weigh? Perhaps billions of tons. If he were there heavy, he would have a big problem trying to move around. But it is ideal for God that he is incorporeal. Even if you carry him inside your wallet, you will not feel any weight. Since he has no form, he can even go in and out through the eye of the smallest needle. In other words, he can move around at will. Being infinitely large yet also infinitely small, he is free to move around anywhere in the universe. If you have something you consider most precious, you will want to carry it with you all the times. You will not want to be separated from it even a moment. Then, if God, the greatest treasure of all of them all, was in your possession, where would you like to attend him? Is there a storeroom where you can store him securely? Where you can attend him? That place is none other than your heart and mind. The human heart and mind form the storeroom where God can be safely attended. Since God is without form, the conclusion is that he should give more importance to being with form than he does to himself. Only then will things begin to return. Conversely, human beings should value their invisible mind and God more than their bodies.